Well, joining me on the line now is Del Shannon. Del, you must be looking forward to the tour very much. I really am. It's going to be a great tour, I think. What keeps you motivated these days? Oh, I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, I really don't know. Uh, just not doing nothing is, is kind of silly, and I do what I do, so I entertain. And, of course, you're an excellent songwriter as well. How much songwriting have you been doing lately? Oh, well, I had a top ten last year with, with the Juice Newton in the country charts called Cheap Love, and I just wrote a couple songs I just recorded before I, uh, I came over here. Now, of course, you're a legend from the 1960s, but how important is it to you to re-establish yourself in the charts in the 1980s? I don't know if it's that important. It's just that it's probably important for me, uh, you know, to create. I think I do miss that now that I've been back in the studio. But it's not uh, life or death. You know, it used to be like, man, you got to have a hit. you gotta have, you got to follow it up with another hit. And, it was like Hitsville, you know, drive you crazy. Now, if I have one, it's great. If I don't, well, you know, no big deal, you know. I mean, I would like to have one, but it, it's not uh, the end of the world if I don't anymore. What would you say is um, the most enjoyable era to actually perform in? Was it back in the 50s and 60s, or is it nowadays? I think both. Both has its... Uh, I mean, in the, in the 60s, it was all new and fresh and just rocking and raging. I don't know if I'd want that back again because you couldn't go eat in the restaurants and the screaming after the show. You you were like a prisoner in a way, but now you're yeah, quite free. You know, I just come and do my job and uh, go on my way and enjoy uh, the city, the cities, as I must say, in the countryside. What do you think of the music scene as it as it is in the 1980s? Well, that's probably right where it's supposed to be. You know, that's where it went. That's where it is. I don't have to accept it. Uh, I'm not down on it. I'm not for it or against it. Whatever it is, and people, uh, somebody, it's satisfying somebody's need, so therefore it's fine with me. There's something about the 50s and 60s which is so special, wasn't it? Because you could actually get involved with, with the fans as well. That's right, yeah, there's a whole thing, you know. Going in and cutting a computerized record, you know. I just don't hear any voices today. I just don't hear any Roy Orbison's or... Dion's. I don't hear any, or even Mick Jagger, for that matter. I just don't hear any distinct great vocalists out there. I miss that. I hear a lot of uh, studio stuff that's done in the studio with sound. And that's fine, you know, for me. But for me, I think it's back to basics, you know. That's for me anyway. That's where I like to hear music. It's where I can hear a real drum and a real guitar and and not too much synthesizer, although I probably introduced the synthesizer years ago with Runaway. That's right. So yeah. I really have nothing to say, <laughs> you know. I'm sorry where it led, but uh, where it led, some of it's good. Of course, the good news as well is that a lot of the 50s and 60s music in its original, untouched form is coming back. I mean, recently we've had uh, Stand By Me, Benny King, we've had Wonderful World, Louis Armstrong, and indeed Runaway is uh, featured in a, in a movie again, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's, a, it's a crime story, actually. It's, it's in a movie also, but it's also in a... It's the... Uh, in NBC in America has a weekly series called Crime Story, and it's, it's a theme song. It's supposed to come out over here. I don't know if it will as far as is the TV thing. It's quite violent. It's about two detectives. But it is a theme song there. Do you ever get tired of singing the old hits again, or do you, you feel that every time you perform it, you're injecting new life into it? I'm glad I have them to do. I know too many singers that are dead, or that, that started out when I did, and are now just mechanics, or they're accountants or there's something else and I'd rather be what I am today you know so I just do what I do it's like uh, I had at times fought with it you know years ago saying oh my god now I gotta do this again it's all attitude it's all where you are in your head and I looked at Sinatra and I said okay I'm gonna go see Frank Sinatra I hope he does his hits and he did he did all his hits and it was great and his hits are like god 40 50 years old that's right and they're still unbelievable great to hear them and to see him do it so I figured well my era, the, the, the people probably want to hear the hits too, and I'm sure they do, because I've been over and seen artists come over with violins and do all kinds of different songs, and people don't want to hear that, you know? Uh, and, and it's okay if an artist wants to do it. If he wants to do that, go work a place where people don't have to pay to hear your hits. Go 
where they pay to just hear you do your thing. You know, I can do that in my basement or in my office. Uh, when I'm being paid for a job, I'm being paid to do my hits, so I do them. And of course, you're introducing your songs to a new audience as well, aren't you? The youngsters yeah, coming up. I, you know, uh, I, I guess I don't have to tour. I, I mean, I'm contemplating going to Australia in September. I really don't want to go, but something in me, uh, you know, when our agent calls, says, come on, we'll give you this, we'll give you that, you can have this. You know, it's quite a nice life, really. Mm -hmm. Do you enjoy the nostalgia, all the, meeting up with all the artists from the 50s and 60s? Because they're still around, a lot of them. Yeah, I, 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 and you know, Jerry, I, I've worked with Jerry before, and, I, and I'm now with him, and it's good to see him. He's, he's, a, he's a jolly good fellow, and uh, I just was in the studio with George Harrison and Jeff Lynn and Tom Petty. They did a little background singing for me on, on the record I was cutting. Uh, so it's great, you know, seeing... I hadn't seen George Harrison in 20-some years. And he came and popped in one night about midnight, him and Jeff and uh, Tom Petty, and sang a little background on one of my records. It was quite fun, you know, it's just fun. It's, it's back for me to have fun. Like, I'm working now with a Marble Aid, and it's a great group, you know. And it's just great to uh, to walk on stage and, and do the songs and do my work. Tell us what your favorite ever song is that you've recorded. Is it Runaway? Well, it's one of them, only because it, it, it established me, I guess, and uh, it was my first record. I liked a, a song I did, I Go to Pieces, which I wrote for Peter and Gordon. I think it's one of the best songs I wrote, and Keep Searching is another one that I like quite well. Can you cast your mind back to the time you were actually recording uh, Runaway for the very first time, and in particular that synthesizer piece, which is one of the, the best synthesizer breaks in rock and roll? Yes, I, it truly is, and that was done by Max Crook. He has half the song. I gave him half the song. I mean, he deserved it for that incredible synthesizer break. Which is, um, I can still remember doing it, yeah. We did four songs in three hours. We did two of his and two of mine, Runaway and Jody. And I did The Snake and some other song that Max did. And that's how he recorded in those days. And it was, I think, three track or two track. So it was very simple. You just basically went in and did it and, and went home. Well, it will certainly stand up as one of the all-time classics. Del Shannon, thanks very much indeed for joining us. All the best for tonight. Great. See you, see you later.